I'm here in San Antonio for NARITS REITWISE, our 2019 Law, Accounting and Finance Conference. Joining me today is Kim Voss, Chief Accounting Officer with American Campus Communities. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Matt. Now, I understand that it was your idea to have a session at this year's REITWISE about challenges in managing a range of generations. Can you share the background that triggered that subject? Yes, yeah, so it's actually twofold. Uh, one of the things that I always appreciate about REITWISE is that those of us in, in the more technical fields come away with a lot of great technical knowledge. Um, but I was really looking to round out everyone's REITWISE experience and provide a session that wasn't necessarily so technical in nature, but that could give people some good takeaways on the soft skills. Because after all, most of us who are attending the conference um, do go back to our respective companies and most of of us are managing individuals. They might be smaller teams, they might be larger teams, and that's really a, a very important and core part of what we all do in addition to the technical pieces. And so I was really hoping to provide this um, session as a way, you know, for, for those of us who are managers to really get some good tidbits about, you know, some of the workplace conflict, things that they probably see in their day-to-day -day job, how, you know, what generations people are in is influencing some of those situations, and to really um, just give them some good takeaways on how they can become better managers and better team builders. Now, obviously, we, we hear a lot of the stereotypes surrounding millennials, but in your opinion, what are some of the most significant issues with respect to managing millennials? There are a few areas where millennials can tend to differ from some of the other generations. And so when you look at what's important to them, they start to deviate a little bit more from the other generations on a couple of key areas, one of them being the opportunity to learn and grow. Um, and the other being the opportunity for advancement. So these two areas are things that millennials find, you know, frankly, much more important in surveys than some of the other generations. And so one of the things we have to realize about millennials is that they grew up in a culture of immediacy. You know, they were provided constant stimuli in terms of personal devices and, you know, all of the technology that they grew up with. And so when you're managing a millennial, you have to realize that they're eager for ability, the, the um, opportunity to learn new things. They want to see quick, short-term results. So some of the ways that you can provide that to a millennial is by assigning them to many new or different projects so that they can lead that project and immediately see a result. Another good tip for managing millennials is to even provide them the opportunity for temporary jobs that are different within the same company. Because at the end of the day, they really want to level up, right? And I say that because they are the video game generation. So they want to demonstrate that they're able to quickly learn those new skills and move on to the next thing. And then the final thing I'd point out about millennials is that work-life balance is, is clearly very important to them. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. Um, a lot of the workplace trends, and we've implemented a few at American Campus, uh, that really have been triggered by the millennials um, are coming from a, a place of them really valuing flexible work hours and telecommuting arrangements and things like that. So they're really the first generation to put that need and that desire for flexibility and that work-life balance really at the forefront. And those of us in management positions have had to respond to that. And now looking at the next generation, Gen Z, um, you know, what's been your experience there or, or what are you expecting from this completely technical, technically savvy generation? Yes. Well, you know, at, at American Campus, we are actually very familiar with Gen Z because these students are residents at our communities across the country. So, um, you know, we're very familiar with what they're looking for, but they are starting to enter the workforce. They were born anywhere from 1997 and later, and so they're in their first few years of entering the workforce. It's important for us to be prepared for that. And the important thing to know about Gen Z is that they really are considered to be the most diverse generation yet. They have a very diverse and global worldview, and so it's very important for them to come to companies that they feel share that global view of the world. Um, one of the interesting things that we've noticed just in surveying our residents, and I think this is definitely going to translate into the corporate environment, is that Gen Zers are, really want to understand the charitable missions of the companies that they're working for. Even for our residents at our properties, we've had a lot of inquiries into um, not only the work that our charitable foundation is doing at American Campus, you know, but also a lot of those ESG issues that you're hearing about. That seems to be very important to Gen Z as well. Um, and so 
One of the other important things to understand about Gen Z is that they're really taking these lines between work and life and they're blurring them even further than the millennials did. And so they are not interested in being judged by FaceTime in the office or how many hours they're seen working at their cubicle. They really want to be judged by their productivity. And so some of the ways that you can really effectively manage Gen Zers and keep them interested and engaged is by offering them new ways to lead. They really enjoy the opportunity to see a long project from start to finish. Um, you know, allow them to take that ownership and to demonstrate that productivity. And then the final thing that I'd point out about Gen Z, which I don't think is a surprise to anyone, is that all of us need to be open to the fact that they have really become comfortable with new and different ways to connect and communicate. They are the most connected generation. They're connected to everything, you know, to the whole world. And so, you know, those of us that might be, you know, uh, used to resolving a workplace conflict situation on a face-to-face -face basis, don't be surprised if your Gen Z employee sends you a text about it. You know, be open to the fact that they like to communicate through social media, through digital means, through text, and things like that. But with, with all that being said, um, Gen Zers really do value the FaceTime. You know, a lot of people might think because they're, they're used to all these other ways of communicating that they don't want that face-to-face -face time, but they actually crave that. They don't need it constantly, but they do want some level of that. Great. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Matt. It was a pleasure. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit NAREIT's website, REIT.com.